p.m. in California. Tomas, welcome. And you want to talk about um, the historical presence of Jesus and how it impacted the world. So how you doing? Hey, good morning, gentlemen. Uh, real quick, Matt, I just want to tell you I've been following you for a long time, and I love uh, your works from the shows to the, to the debates. But um, <clears throat> just to give you some background similar to yours, <clears throat> I was raised uh, a Catholic my whole life. And then in my late 20s, <clears throat> I started going – do an exercise of <clears throat> when somebody said you're a Catholic. Hey, hey Tomas, Tomas, we, we've got like two minutes left in the show. I don't have time for a backstory on you. I apologize. You can either call back on another week if it's critical, or you can make your point about the historical Jesus. Okay, it was a question actually to you. So I was asking sure. like, with ancient worlds how they had old gods like Zeus or whatever and eventually yeah. faded. I'm assuming from the same reasons where you just it's commonality that, you know, you're just getting smarter. Why do you think that <clears throat> Jesus, which I believe existed, but probably didn't do any of the magical stuff. Why do you think that particular story <clears throat> in that old world that had already gone through these cycles was so strong that even up until today, it, it has such a clinch, you know, on world, sure. you know, world politics and governments and so many because it because it was it was com because it was compelling to the right people who managed to make it the official state religion and kill off and outlaw people uh, who disagreed, um, and that religion is the one that was essentially the Holy Roman Emperor as uh, <laughs> Empire as, as Rome is taking everything. Um, don't get me wrong; there are things within Christianity as it's taught and as as it has been taught that appeal and are certainly popular, but. Um, what ends up happening is when, when you know, you've got Constantine declaring what is and isn't legal and that we're going to change our, you know, well, not, not necessarily Constantine in that case, but in other cases, hey, we're going to change the calendar based on this and we're going to take over yours and we're going to go ahead and co-opt your religion so that we're going to take Esther and make that Easter and we're going to, you know, all these other things. Christianity and the the vicious regime that helps spread it uh, it's not like modern day where people are going out. We're going to try and spread Christianity with love. It's, that's not remotely was you know, go look up what the crusades were. This is what mm -hmm. fundamentally changed the world. And now you have the descendants of those people um, and the, and the, and the, the governments and nation states that are the descendants of what those people created. That's the best explanation I can give you for why it took off. Um, but I will say for the people who think, and I got to let you go, Tomas, because we're out of time, but for the people who think that it spread because it's true, um, keep that in mind when you're no longer the most popular religion, when one of those other religions takes over. The argumentum ad populum is just a fallacy. And if it were in fact true, if Christianity were in fact real, why on mm -hmm. earth would I have had to sit here for 16 and a half years or 17 years or however long it's been? asking for caller after caller after caller to defend those beliefs and still getting and ending up with nothing. Oh, there may be a higher power. Oh, there's this. Oh, there's that. Well, there could be this. What about the Kalam? Well, that doesn't involve a God. Well, it could if we did this change. It's ridiculous. It is beyond ridiculous to think that any of the world's major religions are actually true at their base. What is true and obvious is that human beings are bad at reasoning, especially when it comes to things that they're emotionally attached to. We are ignorant of many things and it terrifies us. And so it feels good if in our befuddlement, there's someone we can point to, to say, ah, I don't understand it, but God does. We are not good moral reasoners. And so it's much easier for us to just say there's a God and he dictates what's right and wrong. And then I don't have to think about it. And I don't have to feel bad for looking down on people or answer, you know, oh, why don't you like gay people? Well, it's not because I'm personally flawed. It's because God doesn't like gay people. See, I don't ever have to take responsibility for anything. I don't have to think. I don't have to evaluate. I don't want to have to learn critical thinking or skepticism. I can just go with what everybody else does. And then I don't lose any friends and it's all comforting. And even if I don't believe in a God, I can keep using the same label and pretend it's awesome. Have the courage of your fucking convictions and please try to embrace reality. Watch shows like Truth Wanted that explore questions beyond just religion. 
watch Talk Heathen, watch the nonprofits, figure out what's going on, but read and research. And don't just believe something because it's popular or because you were raised with it, but because it's actually demonstrably true. Because if it turns out you're wrong, you may never find out. But if you do, wouldn't it suck to face the wrong God? being convinced in your lack of evidence and monumental ignorance that some other God was real, at least when I'm dead, if it turns out there's an afterlife and I have to answer to somebody, if that being is actually a God, they will know without question that I honestly pursued the evidence, was sincerely unconvinced, and they will also, if they are wise, know that this was the one and only correct decision based on the available evidence.